Okay, here we are back in the Wallapini. It's mid-February. It's 5 degrees outside. It's 59 degrees here in the Wallapini. We've had a lot of comments, a lot of questions. Uh, this is more popular than we thought. Today, we're going to discuss some of the issues we've had, some of the changes we would like to make if we built another one, and answer your questions. Well, first off, I want to say this. I think a lot of people thought this was our end product. This is really a prototype. It's a proof of concept. We were trying to see what you could do with absolutely no power. A lot of people have said, well, why don't you put a GAT system in there? Oh, you need fans for this, or you need this, or you need that, or you need to open up the back. You could do all those things if you provide power or gas or electricity or solar panels or something like that. We were trying to prove the concept can you keep it above freezing with absolutely no supplemental power, no fans, nothing? And so with that in mind, the design is based on that. And what we were hoping to do is for this thing to last 10 years, and that's about the lifespan of the uh, twin walled polycarbonate anyway. And could we learn from that in order that we could go and design, which we're doing right now, our off the grid home and use the concepts we learned here to design that home. So really the knowledge we gained is priceless. But let's start first with the bad news. <laughs> the bad news is about three days before this uh, cold snap hit the United States, we got a pretty significant leak in our water system. Now I want you to remember this water system is, it's like a battery bank. It's a thermal battery bank. So if the water drains out of that in the winter, my thermal battery bank is gone. Well, that joint right down there began to leak right before the cold snap. I could not drain the tanks and seal it up in time for the cold snap, so I knew it was going to be ugly. But we thought, well, this is what happens. Why did this happen? The one change I would make, and I think I mentioned this in the other video, this should either be on a footer or it should be compacted. It's only about 400 pounds, 450 pounds per barrel. So you could compact that earth and make sure it doesn't settle. When it settles, although this PVC is pretty flexible, it can actually cause leaks in the joints, and that's exactly what happened. That one settled it a little bit. It caused a leak in the joint at the wrong time of the year. And so when I lose 50% of my water, I've lost 50% of my heating capacity. To give you an idea, I did a calculation. About three hours of sunlight gives me a net increase of 80,000 BTU. Now, for those of you who are engineers, uh, that's like running a space heater for about 16 hours, a little 1,500-watt uh, space heater for 16 hours. That's a tremendous amount of heat gain that these barrels get. But if I lose the water out of them, I either get zero, or if it's half full, I get half of that. So you can see how important that water is, and leaking out really destroyed us this time. First off, one of the changes I would make is where the water comes in here, I would have a one-way valve up there and the drain pipe coming into the tank. Right now, I'm stuffing a rag in there to prevent cold air from coming in that pipe. Now, once that water comes into this barrel, instead of having it come out of the bottom into the feed line, I would actually have that line up about 10 to 12 inches off the bottom and have it overflow into these tanks. And the reason I would do that, I could even bring it up to the top. The reason I want to do that is because I want sediment to capture in that first tank and then allow it to overflow into the next tanks. And that's going to keep a lot of my sediment here and allow me to clean out the end barrels maybe once or twice a year, but not have to clean out these barrels because most of it's going to be trapped right in there. Now, how do I prevent the problem I just had where I had a leak in the system in the coldest time of the year? So what I would do to fix that leak problem that I just had is I would put valves in that interconnecting line. If I put three valves, that gives me four different sections. So if I have a leak in one of those sections, I can close that section off, drain those tanks right through the drip line, and go ahead and do my repair and then fill them back up again. I didn't have that option right now because I have no tie-in valves. So, and I'm sure if a plumber would have helped me with this, he would have said, you know what? You probably need to put valves in there because something's going to go wrong. I have no way to maintain this water line without draining all of the water, all 1,600 gallons of water out of those tanks. And that's not a good design. So don't, don't make that same mistake. 
Okay, so several people have asked us, uh, what kind of temperatures are you looking at? Well, we're 40 degrees north latitude, and our growing zone is 5B, roughly. We're right on the edge, actually. So in the last two weeks, we kind of had a cold snap here in the United States, if, if you've been around. Uh, let me look at some of the numbers here. I'm going to cheat and look at my notes. So for the past 12 days, we have been below freezing. Um, and we've also had 12 straight days of no sun. This is the first sunny day. That's why I came out here. I love being in the Wallapini when it's sunny because it's nice and warm. So no sun, that really hurts us. Although you do get some solar radiation that actually heats it up. But during the day, the highest temperature in the last couple of weeks was 17 degrees Fahrenheit. And at night, we were usually single digits, really hovering around zero, uh, down to negative five Fahrenheit. It's about seven degrees outside right now. So it's, uh, it was mostly single digits that we were seeing with very little sun. Um, again, only about two hours of sunlight in the last two weeks. And so it was the worst time possible to have a leak in those barrels. But in essence, uh, this is the first time, that was the bad news, this is the first time in several years that we've actually gone below freezing. We were coming out here and our temperatures at night uh, on some of the coldest nights, when we got around zero and below, it was down to 28 degrees. So we actually did get below freezing. But we still have water in the barrels. And you can see the top of our citrus trees are looking better because that cold air, the way we designed this, the cold air comes down, goes over the grow bed and drops into the cold sink. So it actually protected the tops of our citrus here. And some of the plants down here uh, can withdraw the cold temperatures anyway. So we were able to, able to uh, get some survival rate, even though our uh, system somewhat failed. But while I'm up here, I want to talk a little bit about the roof. Some people had asked me, why did I not glaze the backside? Okay, remember, this is completely off the grid. There is no supplemental heat. You can glaze the back side, and you will get more sun on the back side of these plants. Now, in the summer, these come out, and I would still do that. But as far as why did I glaze, not glaze the back side is because I have to look at total energy in and total energy out. You want to minimize your surface area that is a net energy loss, okay? So you're losing a lot of energy on the north side, okay? And if I had mylar sheets or if I had a supplemental heater or if I had a GAT system with fans and stuff, then I can afford to do that and I would glaze that. But I don't have any of that. So I really have to watch, a, you know, where is my net flow out and that backside is a huge net flow out. So I had to protect that, okay? And in the summer, I'll pull this down and get more light out of there. So people have asked me, why didn't you collect water off the south wall? The reason I don't collect water off that south wall is because it would be collected lower than the tanks and I would then have to pump the water into the tanks. Again, there is no energy in this wall of peony, so I did not want to pump anything. So the back is sloped so that I can get maximum collection in the back, which is above the barrels, and I don't have to pump any water. It's all gravity fed. The other reason for the sloping back is because if I sloped it up, I could gather more solar radiation, but then I significantly increase the airspace in the wall of Pini. I'm minimizing the surface area on the outside, also minimizing the airspace inside the wall of Pini, so I don't have to heat a large area. So going back to the changes that I would make, airflow, airflow, airflow. Okay, plants need carbon dioxide, but also if you can use that ground heat more efficiently, that's the way to go. The ground air heat transfer system that you've seen, sometimes called GAT system, those are wonderful systems. I think some people have really, really um, modified that to, to work to their advantage and, and done a great job at that. A great supplement to this type of system. I think Russ Finch has mastered the system with his greenhouse in the snow. But again, the GAT system a lot of times requires supplemental electricity. Can you do that without electricity? And absolutely you can. We get a lot of airflow in here just because of convection, okay? The hot air rises, it goes out the vents we put in the top. That system seems to work really well. But what I didn't do is I didn't put enough ground tubes into the cold sink. I would make it 10 or 20 times as many tubes coming into the, the system. Now, you need to have drainage if, if you're a high water table. But really, 
I would bury pipes several hundred feet away from the wall of peony and bring them in under the floor. And when that heat gets hot enough and those vents are open on the top, it's going to naturally suck that air through the ground and up through the top. Now, in the winter, I may have to use some fans to pull that air through the ground and into the greenhouse. But I think adding a system like that would significantly improve this design and, and bring that temperature extreme down even more. It would make it cooler in the summer and it would make it warmer in the winter. Another change that I talked about before was this front wall, it needs to be either a poured front wall or a brick or something. This, I think, um, it was fine for what we did. We had a hole. We were trying to just use the materials that we had. But I would definitely uh, pour a front wall here all the way down and then have drain tile and gravel on the bottom there. And then if I had the concrete truck out here, I would probably run a footer there. I've debated whether I should run a footer for the tanks or if I should just use compaction. Check with your local engineer if you've got some good clay soil. You should be able to run a compactor in the back. That's about 13,000 pounds or, yeah, it's about 13,000 pounds of water. It's about 450 pounds per barrel. So you should be able to compact it enough. But what I'm going to have to do now is drain the entire system, recompact it, and reset that. And you don't want to have to do that five years down the road. Another change I would make is... If you really want to monitor temperature and humidity, you really need to do it in different parts of the wall of Peony. You've got grow bed temperatures, you've got front wall temperatures, you've got cold sink temperatures, and you've got barrel temperatures. I would add a thermometer to the barrels to monitor water temperature. One thing that allows you to do is uh, to see if you're ready for a big cold snap. It also lets you calculate the net gain of thermal. What I do to calculate that is I actually check water temperature and then I see how many days or how many hours of sunlight, check water temperature again and see how much it's gone up. It's a pretty easy calculation. But put multiple um, thermometers around here because it has microclimates in here and you can put plants in different places to capitalize on that. So let's walk over here. I'm going to show you a perfect example of a microclimate that you'd be able to capture with multiple thermometers. As you know, we kind of had a... <laughs> Failure this year because of the, the water system and the cold snap. But I want you to look behind uh, the mama aloe here. See these pups? Okay. They are, they are doing fine. They are firm. They're spry. Even though the big plant took quite a hit, these in the back were protected. And look, they're closer to the barrels. So that heat kept coming off the barrel and protecting those little pups in the back. So you can uh, strategically place your plants to take advantage of that. Now, a lot of this, this is the end of February, a lot of this is harvested. We come in here for soups and salads and stews and all sorts of things, so we've plucked out the majority of the food on this end, and if we go down here, so section one and two are almost completely harvested. We've still got some here in section three. Uh, the cabbages are still coming up. We'll leave those in spring, and the kohlrabis are doing okay. Now, because of our water system failure, we had to say, well, are we going to water or are we going to leave it in the tanks for warmth? I wanted to leave it in the tanks for warmth, so our carrots kind of dropped down. So they may not be the biggest and the best, but any of you who grow carrots, you can just leave them in the ground and, and see what happens. In fact, I can pull this little guy up here and see how it's doing. It's tiny, but still healthy. They've still got a good root on them, so I think we can leave them in there and keep them going and see how they do. These turnips are ready for harvesting. We need to get those out of there and get those inside. We'll leave the leeks for spring. And we need to get rid of this down here. The arugula, we've already harvested that and it started bolting, so we just need to take that out. A lot of this we need to get out of here because we've got the seed, the seed plants are already inside in the basement under grow lights. We're going to transfer that out here because within about two weeks, it's going to be warm enough in here to have all our plant starts out here for the spring. So this stuff needs to come out and harvested, and then we're going to get those uh, seed trays down here. We're going to get the planks up top and put the seed trays up there, and this will transition from a garden to our start garden, if you will. So you can see the front wall being as steep as it is, the snow, when the sun comes out, it generally falls right off the front. Now, 
A lot of times in the morning, if it's snowed overnight, I'll actually come and brush it off a little bit because you want that to get through there. But the back side, you definitely want to leave the snow on the top. It's a great insulator, especially now when it's in single digits. A nice good three or four inches of snow on the back is a great insulator. And in fact, I leave it down here on the bottom too. It's like perfect insulation. A lot of you have asked, hey, do you have plans for that uh, that you can send me? Do you have a PDF? Well, like I said, it was a prototype. It was a proof of concept. I'm not kidding. When I said I sat down at the dining room table with a French engineer, and in about two hours, we drew this on a piece of paper. And that piece of paper was carried in my pocket, and it's all wrinkled up. You don't want to get that. We're going to try to put something together, though, because I would love to share this knowledge. Even better than the plans for this, we intend to have plans to go completely off the grid. We're going to probably have new property and we're going to do some crazy things like using more horsepower and designing our house and our wallapini and every structure that we have on this type of design so that we can use natural passive solar energy to power the entire place. So keep watching and in the next couple of years you can follow us through that adventure. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed today's content. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And if you have, tell a friend, hit the like button, and leave a comment. We really like those comments. Otherwise, we'll see you back next time here at A Different Way. Cheers.